Greetings, everyone. That is my song. Uh, that intro song is uh, called Emotional Roller Coaster by Vivian Green and Red uh, Slow Song. Um, welcome to the Ace of Coast Radio Show, everyone. I am your host, Rabina Rastaban, a.k.a. The Realist Astrologer. And as I said, that intro song is called Emotional Roller Coaster, and I feel that this song is quite fitting for the topic of tonight's discussion, being as though that cancer can often be on an emotional roller coaster ride. So this is the 12th episode as part of the Cosmic Council Radio Network, and I hope you can, uh, you guys can hear me loud and clear. And I'm so happy to be part of this fabulous team of astrologers. And we have our website up and running, and Starting this month, we're going to be offering uh, workshops and webinars. Um, I'm going to be offering uh, astrology, numerology uh, webinar uh, at the end of this month. I think it's on Sunday. I think one is going to be on the 23rd and the other one on the 30th, but I'll get back to you on that one. But um, And then uh, also we're going to have the webinar charting uh, your cosmic weather which is going to help you uh, navigate the world of planetary transit. So if you are accustomed to looking at your chart, but if you come across some challenges with trying to interpret transits, that's a very good webinar that you should uh, consider taking. So I'm just so happy right now that everything just seems like it's falling into place with the Cosmic Council and also with respect to my uh, spiritual advising practice. So um, I'm going to continue to keep plugging forward, and I just wanted to get into some current events before I delve into the main topic. So um, I recently created a new Facebook group. It's called Real Talk Astrology, and I created that last week. So as of today, I believe I'm up to 113 members. So I feel like I'm off to a good start. Uh, There's a lot of activity in the group. People are posting every day, so I'm really happy about that. Um, New members are joining every day, so I hope it continues to grow. And the thing about this uh, new Facebook group I created, um, it coincides with my progressed moon in Cancer entering my seventh house. So the topic of tonight's discussion is Cancer for Cancer season. So it just so happens that my progressed moon and progressions basically point to uh, different phases in your life, different trends and major themes that you're going through. So um, with my progressed moon being in cancer and entering my seventh house, that coincides with me creating this new Facebook group because the seventh house deals with social activity. It deals with putting yourself more out there, having a more public presence. Um, creating a social group. So think about Facebook being social media. And then um, I knew that my moon was going, my progress moon was going to enter my seventh house for since last year. So I, I was anticipating this moment. However, I didn't come up with the idea to create this group until about a month ago. So while I knew that, you know, I was going to become more uh, present in terms of you know, just social media and stuff, I didn't know exactly what I had in store. So it's very interesting how right when the progress moon or my progress moon was entering my seventh house, I came up with this idea. And so far, like I said, it's off to a good start. And I feel that that is a perfect uh, example of the progress moon moving into your seventh house. And the fact that it's in cancer I feel like, or I'm trying to create kind of like a family atmosphere and cancer jokes with family uh, with this Real Talk Astrology group, no matter how big it gets. Now, I want it to get rather large. I want to get about like thousands of members, like about 5,000 members. That would be nice. But I still want it to have kind of like a warm and family atmosphere. I don't want people to come in the group posturing or, you know, if some people are more well-versed in astrology, astrology than others I don't want you know some people to get overblown ego or display you know egotism or elitism or whatever like that so I want it to be a very 
friendly, warm atmosphere where people can share their thoughts, people can share posts and videos and all that type of stuff, astrology related, of course, and where we can all learn from each other and we can all just feel like this one cohesive unit that is uh, basically uh, celebrating astrology and learning and growing through astrology. So if you would like to join my uh, group, and if you haven't joined already, it's called Real Talk Astrology, R-E-A-L-T-A-L-K, Astrology. So just search for that on Facebook and um, put in a request, and I will accept it. Uh, Let's move along. So July 4th is coming up. July 4th will actually be on Tuesday. So some of you guys might have, like, some cookouts, barbecues planned, and might be getting together with family or whatever. So I just wanted to just break down the astrological and numerological significance of July 4th being Independence Day for the United States. So uh, I'm just going to get into the history of it real quick, real briefly, because I don't want this to be a dry show, and this uh, type of historical information can be rather dry. But basically, um, just to paraphrase, According to Wikipedia, um, July 4th was designated as Independence Day because of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. However, they were saying that it could have actually took place a month later on August 4th of 1776. So there's been some dispute about that. And what is interesting is I pulled the chart for July 4th, 1776, and Mercury just so happened to be retrograde in Cancer on that date. So Mercury retrograde can deal with problems with communication or things getting mixed up, uh, giving out the wrong information. So that says a lot about Mercury being retrograde and the fact that historians to this day are disputing the fact of when the Declaration of Independence was actually signed. So uh, two interesting things. Two of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, um, James Monroe, wait a minute, wait a minute, two of them died on the same day. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, they both died on July 4th, 1826. So they both died on Independence Day, and they were two signers of the Declaration of Independence, which I thought was rather interesting. So that meant that that whole date must have meant a whole lot to them. And James Monroe, another founding father who was elected as president, also died on July 4th, 1831. Now, to me, because I'm spiritual, I got to put some uh, spiritual component to this because I'm like, okay, in terms of numerology, the four number four can be a troublesome number and it can bring faded events. And some faded events can actually appear to be like curses. So as a person of color, as a black woman, when it comes to Independence Day, I can't help but to always remember that even though, you know, the United States gained independence from Great Britain, uh, black people were still enslaved in this country. And uh, slavery was not abolished until 1865. So it's hard for me to really get into the spirit of July 4th uh, and Independence Day so I'm wondering if, you know, these presidents dying on J- J- July 4th with some type of curse or karma or whatever like that, or maybe Great Britain put, put a curse on this country. Who knows? But I just thought that was an interesting tidbit. And um, so looking at the chart for Independence Day and just breaking down the date. So Independence Day takes place during cancer season, July 4th. And cancer deals with nations or nationality. It deals with, like, having pride in your nation, pride in your background and where you come from. So it's quite fitting that Independence Day took place during cancer season. And then the fourth, four is a number of independence because four is the number of Uranus and also Aquarius. So that's quite fitting as well. And then the moon on that day was in Aquarius, and Aquarius deals with independence again. There was a stellium in Cancer. The sun was conjoined to Jupiter. Again, that could point to independence or gaining your freedom, uh, sovereignty. The north node was in Leo, and that can deal with sovereignty as well. 
and then Mars was in Gemini, and it was forming a trine, which is a positive aspect to the moon in Aquarius, and Mars and Gemini can deal with, like, an official signing of a document, um, forging ahead into your new found independence, that Mars and Gemini trine moon in Aquarius. So that's just a little brief history lesson since July 4th is upon us. And um, I wanted to add some astrological insight into that. So I just think that uh, it's quite interesting that this date was chosen. And the fact that there's been a dispute about the actual uh, date of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, to me, uh, confirms my suspicions that they purposely chose July 4th because these people, uh, the people that were really in charge even back then, they were into occultism and mysticism. They were into astrology and numerology and all that stuff. So they knew about the mysteries and whatnot. Um, you could call these people the Illuminati or whatever, but or secret societies, but they were the ones really uh, pulling the strings in terms of the United States gaining its independence from Great Britain. But um, I just wanted to get into that real quick. So let's get into cancer season because I got a lot of information. And, of course, I want to open the phone lines in the second hour. And it looks like I already have some callers, so that's good. So I'm going to try to open up the phone lines a little bit earlier of this episode just in case people want to share their cancer stories, both the light side and the dark side, and just in case people uh, want to talk about where cancer ends up in the house, in their houses. So um, just a little brief breakdown of how this is going to go uh, tonight. So the way I'm going to discuss cancer is first I'm going to get into the light manifestations and the dark manifestations of cancer. And then I'm going to take uh, certain uh, bodies, planetary uh, bodies. Uh, I'm going to talk about the moon and cancer. I'm going to talk about Saturn and cancer and how that can manifest. I'm also going to talk about Jupiter and cancer. And then I'm going to talk about cancer through the houses. So if you have your charts or if you know where cancer is in your chart, this might be a uh, Hopefully this will give you some insight and maybe some people will be able to confirm some of what I'm saying. Now, you know, um, if you've seen my videos on YouTube, you know I'm all about the dark side and manifestations of the signs. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, very intrigued by the dark side of things, and that deals with my Scorpio North Node in my 10th house, Scorpio on my Midheaven. So... Some of the uh, interpretations I'm going to give for uh, this cancer energy and how it manifests is going to be on the dark side, but I found that a lot of my listeners and viewers, uh, they really appreciate that because I think a lot of uh, astrologers don't do enough justice when it comes to the dark side. All right, so, oh, and then... After I go through Cancer through the houses, I'm going to discuss the North Node in Cancer, the South Node in Cancer, because, you know, if you've been listening to me for a while, you know I love the Lunar Nodes. And then I'm going to get into four Cancer celebrities. So hopefully I could get through this in about 45 to 55 minutes, and then I'll open up the phone line. So I'm going to go kind of fast, so forgive me. So let's get into the light manifestations of cancer. So cancer is one of those warm and cozy signs, and cancer can really make you feel warm and cozy. They just have that way about them. And cancer is very caring and nurturing. Um, Cancer is also very sentimental. Um, If you give cancer something that they really like or they really want, they will gush all over you, and they will show you so much appreciation. They will be so happy. They will just be overjoyed. So that's really nice about them. And they will keep things like keepsakes. They love things like that, photo albums, scrapbooks, all that stuff, because they're very sentimental. They like to keep memories. They like to celebrate memories. So that's very positive about cancer. Cancer also has that sensitivity. Um, And that's why cancer makes such a great nurse. I often marvel at nurse, or maybe marvel is not the right word, 
I off, I'm, I, I'm in awe of a lot of nurses because one thing about me, I don't have any planets in cancer. I have cancer on my seventh house cusp, and I'm going to kind of uh, discuss a little bit about how that manifests in my life. But So I really don't have a strong affinity with cancer in my chart. So that's why I know I could never be a nurse. <laughs> I just don't have the patience. I just don't have that sensitivity. I just don't have that attentiveness. And that's why I'm in awe of nurses. And the times I've been in the hospital and I've been under a nurse's care, more so than a doctor, nurses just have this selfless, caring, nurturing way about them. And they just make you feel much better. And, and matter of fact, I've never, I don't think I've ever come across a mean nurse. I, actually, I did in Philly when I had my second daughter. Oh, yeah. This, yeah, this was a horrible hospital. Einstein. Yeah, bad experience. Other than that, nurses, for the most part, you know, they're golden, and I really appreciate them, um, them about that. So that's why cancer makes a really good nurse, because when it comes to caring for others, cancer can be very selfless in that respect. Cancer, in terms of sensitivity, also is very psychic. Cancer is one of the most psychic signs of the zodiac. They just easily pick up on information. They pick up on vibes very easily. Um you heard of that saying, gut feeling, that comes from cancer. So if something doesn't feel right, or if, you know, they feel like something is should be right or whatever, they'll feel it in their gut. So that's uh, very positive with cancer. And that is also a defense mechanism. It keeps them protected because if they listen to their gut, they can save themselves from a lot of harm and trouble. Also, another... Uh, light manifestation of cancer is cancer has a vivid imagination. And in that vein, cancer makes for a great writer, storyteller, and poet, also spoken word artist. Cancer's imagination is just so rich, it's so vibrant, and it's boundless. So that's why they're, like, really good as a novelist as well. And especially when it comes to, like, writing books for children and, like, writing fairy tales and all of that stuff because, like I said, their imagination is boundless. It just goes beyond the normal everyday existence, and that's how they can, they're can they able to convey thought. Another good thing about cancer being a great writer is cancer can use their own personal experiences, their own background, their own history, and put it into words and really make it relatable. Cancer is one of those uh, signs that's very relatable. And that's why cancer tends to be very good with the public. Cancer just has this magnetic pool with the public where they can just pull people in because they're very personable. You can relate to them like they're almost family. So uh, think about uh, some comedians that are cancers, like uh, Bill Cosby, even though he's had his scandal. You know, he was so good on the Cosby show because he was really relatable as a father. So, uh, and then think about Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy, rest in peace, he was a cancer. And I always said, like, Charlie Murphy is, like, everybody's uncle. Like, he reminds me of, like, he would be my uncle or something. And that is just so cancer. So cancers are just very relatable people, and that makes them very popular with the public. Um, Cancer also makes a great chef. Chef. I said chef. Chef. Uh, So they make a top chef. Cancer is the sign of the chef. So cancer is one of the signs that deals with food. So when it comes to cooking, they take a very nurturing approach. They're very attentive. They take their time. They're very patient. And they really care about uh, feeding people with love. So you've heard of that whole thing, uh, that book series, Chicken Soup for the Soul. That's cancer all day. The person who came up with that might be a cancer. I don't know. But they probably have some strong cancer energy in their chart. Also, uh, cancer makes for a great early childhood childhood educator. Not so much in terms of uh, high school, junior high, and I'm going to get into an example about that. But, like, early childhood, preschool, up until I would say K through 6, they make a pretty good educator, teacher. Also, cancer makes for a great historian. Cancer tends to have a love of history in general or of certain historical periods. Cancer can also make for a great museum curator as well. 
And cancer is about closeness, and cancer is very family-oriented, of course, because cancer deals with family. And cancer will always make you feel at home, or they will at least try to make you feel at home. Another thing about cancer is they're very caring, not just for uh, towards humans, but they tend to be very caring towards animals as well. So they're one of the signs, and it makes sense because uh, cancer is in trying to Pisces, and Pisces deals with large animals, and cancer is in sexual to Virgo, which deals with small animals. So cancer is one of those signs that's just naturally conducive to be a pet owner and also to possibly be a pet trainer or where they are a veterinarian or they work with pets maybe in a pet shelter, what have you, or they might adopt pets. Um, one dark side of cancer trait, and I'm getting into the dark side. See how I am? I'm getting into the dark side before I even complete this list. But uh, one dark side uh, trait of cancer is they can be so caring that they can end up hoarding animals because they don't want to turn down any strays that they happen to come across. All right, moving along with the light side. Uh, cancer has a great memory. Cancer has great recall of facts and details. And cancer's memory is often, like, photographic, like picturesque. And when they tell a story, they're very descriptive, and that's why they make great storytellers. Cancer is about nationalism. So as I mentioned about July 4th, cancer deals with pride in your nation. It deals with patriotism. Cancer is also a great supporter and a loyal friend. Um, Some of my biggest uh, supporters, fans, uh, biggest supportive friends on Facebook are cancers. So uh, I've noticed that about cancer, where they will really champion somebody that they really care about, somebody that they really love, somebody that they really adore. Cancer is also great about saving money. And cancer knows how to make a dollar stretch. They know how to stretch a buck. So that's really good about them. They're very resourceful. And then also cancer makes for a a great actor, and that deals with their emotional uh, makeup. They're all emotion, and you know to be a good actor, you have to put your emotion into it. And then cancer has the ability to shift personas or shift moods when it's called for, so that also contributes to being a great actor. So just think about Forrest Whitaker, he's a cancer, Tom Cruise, Meryl Streep, Tom Hanks. They're all great actors who happen to be cancers. Now let's get into the dark side. (laughs) Let's get into the dark manifestations of cancer. So, of course, as most people already know, one of the dark manifestations of cancer is cancer can be over-emotional, and cancer can engage in emotional blackmail. So I have a personal story about this, and I'm not going to mention the name, but my uh, teenage daughter, she's in the band, and her band teacher is a cancer. So before my daughter... Like, when my daughter first entered band as a freshman, she's going to be a senior come this August. When she first entered band as a freshman, she loved her band teacher. And her band teacher was very nurturing, very sweet, very caring, took her time to really teach and everything like that. And I kept telling my daughter, okay, like, but be careful with her because I know how cancers can be. So cancers can be over-emotional, they can be hypersensitive, they can be clingy, and cancer can engage in emotional blackmail. So my daughter's band teacher is all of it. She's the light manifestation of cancer, but she also has a serious dark side. So I've been a witness to this over the years from her, my daughter being a freshman, and now she's headed into uh, senior her senior year, And this is a testament to the stress that this woman has put on my daughter, where my daughter is not going to take ban in her senior year because she's just, she's over it. She's burnt out. And a lot has to do with her ban teacher, in my opinion. Now, her ban teacher, uh, according to my daughter, will cry at the drop of a hat in class in front of the students. She will play the poor me role. She'll have pity parties for herself. She's always hurting herself, and I'm going to explain that um, a little more uh, later. So she's always hurting herself, so she's always wrong with her leg, or she's always getting sick, or she's, she's always trying to get sympathy. And 
if a student can't make practice, it's a big deal, and she just gets all emotional about it, and she holds it against the student, or if a student needs to drop band for whatever reason, um, th this even happened between me, my daughter, and uh, her band teacher, where my daughter wanted to stop taking, uh, it was called zero hour or whatever, where she had to wake up extra early just to uh, go to uh, early band practice. So my daughter was like ending up, you know, being very groggy and she was slacking in her other classes. So I was like, you know, and she really wanted to drop it. And I was like, well, yeah, you could drop it. So I wrote a note to the band teacher and the band teacher kept writing me back and forth. Please, I can make an exception. She could come in an hour early. I mean, talk about clingy. She would not, she did not want to let my daughter go. So that's just an example of how a dark-sided cancer could be. I don't think she's totally dark-sided. I would say she's about 40% dark-sided, but she really kind of has it bad, the fact that, you know, she will just break out into tears in front of her students in class, and she's done this a number of times. And she's a workaholic, and cancer can be a workaholic. Also, uh, another dark manifestation of cancer, cancer can't let go of the past. Uh, they They just have a hard time moving on. And that's because cancer does deal with the past. Cancer deals with your background. Cancer deals with that which is familiar. So cancer loves to deal with the familiar. They don't like to deal with the strange and unusual. And that's why cancer and Aquarius clash, because Aquarius is strange and unusual. I don't know if you've ever seen an Aquarius and a cancer interact with each other, but most instances I've seen, a lot of times they clash. And I've seen them become bitter enemies as well, where they just can't stand each other. But uh, that's the reason cancer is all about familiarity and warmth, whereas Aquarius is about weirdness, strangeness, and Aquarius can be very cold and emotionally aloof. Also, dealing with the past, cancer as a, on the dark side will return to past lovers that they know are not good for them just because of that familiarity. Also, cancer can be too touchy-feely. Like, I've known some cancers where when they're talking to you face-to-face, -face, they can't help but to touch you. Like, they might just tap you, like, intermittently. Like, and it deals with, they are very tactile, and that deals with that closeness that cancer needs. So cancer can sometimes be a little touchy-feely, and in that vein, they can overstep their boundaries or be a little bit too much in your personal space sometimes. But, at this, but on the flip side, they don't like when people are all up in their personal space. So they need to, like, the dark side cancers need to check themselves on that sometimes. But, um, and cancer has a tendency to be rather nosy on the dark side. Uh, cancer likes to really know what's going on with everybody because, again, they don't like dealing with the strange or unfamiliar. They don't like to be left out of the loop or not be in the know. And they really take it hard when, you know, Everybody else knows something, and they, they're left out of the loop, or they don't know what's going on. So in that vein, cancer can come across as nosy or a busybody at times. Uh, just I, I don't know if anybody has ever had a cancer neighbor, but um, you might be able to see that trait in your cancer neighbor where, you know, as soon as you come out the house, they're saying, oh, hi, how you doing? Oh, oh, I see you uh, got a new car yesterday. Or, I, oh, I see you, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that type of stuff. Um, also, another dark side of manifestation is cancer can be too subjective. Um, lack objectivity, where cancer takes everything personally. Cancer is the most personal sign. So it's very hard sometimes for cancer to take themselves out of the equation and think objectively. Cancer, now, on the light manifestation, I say cancer can be uh, very good at saving money and stretching a buck, but on the dark side, cancer can be downright cheap. Cancer can be a tightwad, and cancer can hoard money. So uh, you ever seen that show Extreme Cheapskate? I guarantee you some of, a lot of those people are cancer, a lot of those people are Capricorn, too, because both of those signs, and that's one of the similarities between the two of them, because they're both motivated by fear. So both of those signs have a strong fear of being broke and a strong fear of living in poverty. And especially cancer has a serious fear of becoming homeless. So cancer, on the dark side, can be a tightwad. They could be a cheapskate. And a cancer could be rich, 
but hoard money, and you would even know that they're rich because they're just not going to show it on the surface because they're afraid of people coming after what they have. So just think about uh, a crab and how a crab like just holds on to things and how strong those crab claws are. And let me go back to the light manifestation because I forgot like another trait that I love about cancer that I forgot to mention. Perseverance and persistence and tenacity. That's cancer all day. Cancer has that perseverance where they can just go and go and go when it's something that they need or really want or something that they really care about. And that's another reason why they make good nurses and caretakers in general. And if you think about it, most nurses, they work crazy schedules or they work long hours. So that deals with the ability to persevere even through hard times. So cancer is really good with that. And part of the reason for that is because when things get tough, cancer can put on that tough shell, that hard shell, and just keep it moving. Now, they might be crying while they're doing it, but they're going to keep it moving. And that's part of the, uh, them being a cardinal sign as well. So uh, back to the dark side. So about hoarding money, cancer can also be a hoarder in general when we're talking about the dark side. So cancer could hoard food, like as a child, uh, a the cancer uh, cancer child might hoard food in their room, or they might have uh, you might look under their bed and they got half eaten cupcakes and like empty package empty packages of candy and whatnot. So cancer can be a hoarder like that, and in that thing, it can be rather messy at times. Um, they could have problems with food in general, or food could be such a central theme in their life that everything else has to revolve around food and. Cancer is prone to hypoglycemia, meaning uh, their blood sugar can become very low if they don't eat on a regular basis. So that could be part of the reason why cancer focuses so much on food. But sometimes cancer can take it too far. Like I had this one cancer friend. We're not friends anymore. But um, that's because she was hypersensitive and over-emotional. I should tell that little story. But anyway, um, she... uh, like, we would go out to eat, like, go do a drive through and and this chick always had to eat. Oh, and if she didn't eat on time, she would, she would get cranky. So before she would even drive off, she would be digging in the bag, and she would be eating. And you know how, I mean, most people might grab a few fries and stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I'm talking about if we're at a burger joint, she's opening the burger, even though we're supposed to be taking it back to her house or whatever, she's opening a burger, she's eating a burger right while she's driving, about to get in a car accident and shit. But, yeah, uh, that could be uh, one of the dark manifestations of cancer where, like, food is just, like, a central theme in their life. And for that reason, they can put on weight. Also, cancer is prone to stomach ailments. So, and it doesn't even have to deal with food. It could just be their temperament. So if cancer's in a bad mood, their stomach might be upset. Or if cancer is around a lot of negative energy, their stomach will start to ache or they might start to get the boo-boos or whatever like that. Um, Virgo is very much like that too. And as you can see, cancer and Virgo are very compatible and both deal with the stomach. Virgo deals with the lower stomach. Um, And cancer can be a whiny crybaby at times. And I've noticed that this is especially true with the male. The males have a tendency to be whiny crybabies, and this is true for men that have uh, moon and cancer as well. Maybe you want to throw in cancer rising too. Another dark-sided manifestation is cancer has a tendency to get emotionally attached too quickly, and this could be in relationships. And this is the reason why, uh, especially cancer women, they can scare men off, like more dominant masculine men. They can kind of scare them off. Because once a cancer is digging you, they want to, like, sink their claws into you and not let go. And they want to, you know, be, like, up on everything that you're doing. And they want texts. And they want, you know, check-ins. And they just want to know what's going on with you. And, you know, the cancer chick that is really digging a guy, she might come up to his job unannounced, bringing him lunch and shit like that. Because cancer women love to feed their men. But on the dark side, she could be a little bit overbearing, smothering, and that can make a man run in the other direction. Also, a dark side of manifestation of cancer is they want to be coddled, 
And a lot of people don't have time for that, especially fire signs and air signs. <laughs> so um, that's why a lot of fire signs and air signs, they tend to lose their uh, patience with cancer after a while because cancer always wants a soft place to fall. And if you're a friend of a cancer, sometimes your cancer friend may be a little bit too emotionally needy. And when they're upset, they might want you to stay on the phone with them for about two hours while they cry on your shoulder and whatnot. And, you know, if something's not right with them, they really want you to, you know, pat them on the back and tell them everything's going to be okay and whatnot. Now, uh, that's where Capricorn and cancer uh, differ very much because Capricorn is not the one to coddle others. So that's where they are, have stark differences. So, I, but I have noticed that in terms of couples, when we're dealing with opposing signs, Capricorn and Cancer tend to work out rather well in terms of uh, couples and even in marriage, and they can end up staying together for years. It's just that the Cancer can't be too emotionally needy or they have to get their emotional needs fed elsewhere outside of the marriage. It could be through friendships. It could be through group associations, what have you. Also, cancer, another dark-sided manifestation of cancer, cancer will choose sides to their own detriment. And what I mean by that is, case in point, I had, uh, I was working, I had this one job, and I became really good friends with a cancer woman. And I uh, ended up leaving the job, but uh me and her, I think um, we said we were going to remain. Matter of fact, I told her I was thinking about leaving. So she was, you know, she was all, like, being supportive and all that stuff. And we would, like, get together sometimes outside the job. I even did readings for her a couple of times and stuff. Real cool lady. But then once I left that job, because she was so loyal to that job and to her boss, she stopped being my friend. So that's what I mean about how cancer can choose sides to their own detriment, whereas, like, it was a valuable friendship. At least I thought it was valuable that we had, but because I quit the job, and I didn't leave on such pleasant circumstances, I didn't make a, a mess of anything, and I, and I didn't cause any drama, but I basically left because I was unhappy, and I let my boss know that I was unhappy. But this cancer chick was real loyal to the company, and she had been with them for years. She had known the boss for years. So basically she sided with the boss instead of me because she had only known me for like a couple of years. So cancer can do that where like they'll have this loyalty thing, even though it doesn't really make it, it's not logical or rational. Also uh, a dark manifestation of cancer, cancer could be overly protective. So that could be overly protective of your boss. I mean, not boss, <laughs> of your spouse overly protective of your friends, overly protective of your children, where you're like a helicopter parent, like you're so afraid to let your child grow up and be independent. And then cancer can also be self-absorbed when it's uh, on the dark side and self-contained. And that makes me think of the chariot card in tarot. The chariot card in tarot is a major arcana card, and it's the card of cancer. It's a cancer card. And the chariot is a card of self-containment. It's a card of being self-absorbed where you're persevering, you're forging ahead, and you're not letting anything to distract you. So in that vein, you can, like, suffer from tunnel vision, or you could suffer from myopia where you don't see anything outside of yourself. Now, that does make you a real good worker because you're not letting anything distract you. But at the same time, it could cause you to shut people out unnecessarily, especially if you feel like they're not going along with your program. And cancer can be like that, where they're so self-absorbed, self-contained, uh, overly protective over what they have or their baby, their project, whatever. They don't want no outside interference. And in that vein, they could be rather uh, standoffish or rather, uh, what's the word? You can even put prejudice in there or rather just closed in where, you know, they don't trust any outsiders. And another dark-sided manifestation is cancer can be long-winded. 
I don't know if some of my listeners have noticed this about uh, some cancers, a lot of cancers actually, but when they're telling you a story, or even if they're if you stop and you ask somebody for directions, and they're giving you this long spiel, and they're telling you like there's a small little green tree on the uh, edge of the uh, on, at this intersection, and this intersection there's a red fire high, like they're going through all this extra detail. They could be a cancer or a cancer riser, got mercury and cancer, what have you. Because cancer on the dark side can be long-winded where they're just telling you more information than what you need to know. So it's like with cancer, sometimes they have to learn how to keep it simple and not be so long and drawn out. And sometimes cancer just wants to hear themselves talk. Also, uh, cancer can play these disappearing acts, and I call it the shell defense system or shell defense mechanism. And you can also call it clamming up where uh, cancer can get all silent and stuff when they feel butthurt or when they feel like they're being criticized too harshly. Or they could just disappear on your ass. Um, Men, the male cancers are famous for this. If things aren't going right in a a relationship, they will just disappear on you. And you won't hear from them. You won't know what's going on. You'll be worrying. You'll think that something bad happened to them. And they kind of like the fact that you're worrying about them too. And um, so, yeah, that's part of their shell defense system when things aren't going well or when they're feeling severely under pressure or when they're feeling personally attacked, they might just get lost, get goats. Cancer can deal with goats. They might get lost, get goats, put up this shell defense system, or they might just clam up and get silent and don't say anything, give you the silent treatment. Now that, the silent treatment and the disappearing act, that is a similarity with Capricorn. Not so much the shell defense system because Capricorn doesn't need a shell because Capricorn is already hard. That's the difference between Capricorn and Cancer. But Capricorn and Cancer will both play the disappearing acts, and they will both uh, give you the silent treatment. If they're unhappy with you or you've done something to disgrace them, they feel, or, you know, if things get a little too hectic. Another dark side of manifestation of Cancer is Cancer can show favoritism. And then another dark sided manifestation, and this is in general, and I mentioned this when I went live on my new uh, Facebook group, Real Talk Astrology, I mentioned how cancer, I ascribe uh, gangs to the sign cancer. So as you know, gangs can be a menace to society, so that is part of the dark sided manifestation of cancer. And uh, like I said in the live show, some people might say, well, no, isn't Scorpio gang? And my take on it is Scorpio is gangsterism or the whole gangster uh, theme of gangsters or the the type of activities that gangsters get involved in, like criminal activities. But when you're talking about gangs themselves, that's cancer because gangs are like a family in themselves. And a lot of you gravitate to gangs when they don't have a strong family unit or a strong family influence. Another dark-sided manifestation I spoke about in my uh, live Facebook group is uh, cancer is the pimp of the zodiac. And I mentioned this before. I mentioned this in my dark-sided cancer mail video. And I mentioned uh, this in a couple of other uh, videos, I think. But uh, I designated uh, cancer as being the pimp of the zodiac. And for the simple reason, uh, as uh, cancer males, they need women. Like, they need women like they need air to breathe. Um, Rarely will you find a cancer man being single for long, or if he's single, trust and believe he has some woman somewhere lurking in the shadows or whatever. Like if you're, if you just meet a cancer man and he claims he's been single for years, either something's really wrong with him or um, he's lying because cancer men need women and cancer moon men, possibly cancer rising men as well. Now, um, so back to the pimp uh, thing, cancer also is about providing home, providing shelter, and that's what a pimp does. Uh, um, He provides home and shelter to his hoes, and he grooms them, and he basically nurtures them, and he also uh, creates structure in their life, and he basically trains them. All of this is cancer, and basically he's taking the plate of their parents or their father or what have you because more than likely these girls that uh, become hoes, become his hoes, have had a horrible upbringing. 
or there was something very tragic that happened to them in their early life, so that deals with cancer again, your early upbringing. Now, um, when I did my live show, before I did my live um, video on my Facebook group, I was like, let me pull a chart of a famous pimp and see if he has some cancer energy. So I pulled the chart of Iceberg Slim. And Iceberg Slim is an old school pen, and he wrote this book called, uh, what was his, what was that book called? Was it called Iceberg Slim? I'm not sure. Something about pimp or whatever like that. I never read it. But anyway, he was one, he was like some hardcore pimp dude. So when I pulled his chart, surprise, surprise, he has a stellium in cancer. He has his moon, Venus, and his moon and Venus are conjoined. Like they're very close together, two degrees apart. Moon, Venus in Cancer, Pluto in Cancer, and Jupiter in Cancer. So there it is right there. And then another pimp is Hugh Hefner. So during that live video feed, I pull Hugh Hefner's chart, and surprise, surprise, he's not a Cancer son, but his North Node is in Cancer, and his Pluto is in Cancer, and his Saturn in Scorpio is in Trine, to his north node in cancer so there it is right there so and also his uranus and pisces is in trying to his north node in um, cancer and uranus and pisces can deal pisces can deal with the photography the magazine the porn all that stuff so uh yeah i stand by what i say about cancer being the pimp of the zodiac so let me finish up here because i got some people waiting on the line so Oh, also, I wanted to talk about nationalists. So you know how some nationalists, I'm a, you could even say some black nationalists, they can take it too far with their nationalism. And that's very cancer as well. So I've come to find uh, some of those hardcore black nationalists or nationalists in general, they don't necessarily have to be black. They could be a white nationalist. They could be a neo-Nazi. Um, they have strong cancer energy in their charts. So they might have Mars in cancer, moon in cancer, moon conjunct Pluto in cancer or whatever like that. So those hoteps, like in terms of the black nationalists, where they just take things too far, everything is about race, they can have strong cancer energy. So that's one of the dark side of manifestations of cancer or where somebody's always pulling the race card for the littlest, simplest reason. All right, so I'm going to get into the moon and cancer. So to uh, to mix it up a little bit, and I spoke about this in previous uh, episodes of the Ace of Cups radio show, I'm also a tarot reader. So I like to combine astrology with tarot, and they are interrelated. So what I decided to do was when I was going to get into certain aspects and manifestations of cancer, I was going to pull a card to provide an um, underlying theme or uh, just an overall theme. So, and what I got was very interesting. And the thing is, I feel like I have a relationship with my cards where my cards have this sense of humor. Sometimes the humor will is only humor that I'll get. So some of these cards may not seem like they apply per some of the positions of cancer, but uh, we'll see. So I'm going to break it down. So, I'm going to start off with the moon in Cancer. So the card that I got to represent the moon in Cancer is Four of Swords. And Four of Swords is a card that deals with basically contemplation. You're not really doing much. It's basically inactivity. Um, it's a retiring card. So you're basically laying back. And if you, the image on the card is the person laying down in most uh, decks. So the person's laying down. It looks like they're either sleeping or meditating uh, it looks like they're in a very relaxed state. So I thought that was very apropos for Moon and Cancer. So for Moon and Cancer, I have uh, basically it produces a retiring personality. So it's a personality that can be rather laid back, non-aggressive, and passive. And the Four of Swords card is a very passive card. Now, Cancer is a cardinal sign. And cardinal signs are not passive in the least bit, but we're talking about the moon and cancer. And the moon is a passive uh, luminary. It's receptive. It's not aggressive. So the moon and cancer, and with cancer being a receptive sign, even though it is cardinal, uh, that points to the four swords as well. So moon and cancer can produce a retiring personality where 
you know, you're really like calm and you, at times you could even be nondescript where you like kind of blend in and you really don't try not to make any waves. That's if your moon is not in bad shape. Also, the moon in cancer to produce someone who's very kind, very helpful and friendly, very nurturing and caring. They have a gentle way about them. And moon and cancer people, they absolutely love and need music, number one. And then also other forms of comfort. So comfort and relaxation is very important for moon and cancer, and that speaks to the Four of Swords card. Also, moon and cancer may hide a lot about themselves. So when it comes to giving up personal information about themselves, if they don't know you really well, if they're not, re- if they don't have a vested interest in you, they may hold back on a lot of personal details. And some of this stuff might be revealed later on, and you might be like, "Oh my God! Like I didn't even know this about this person. Like they didn't even show this side." Also, the moon and cancer person, deep down inside, they really want to be taken care of. Like, they want to be nurtured. Like, they have a strong need to be nurtured. So while they are very nurturing, they have a strong need to be nurtured as well. And moon and cancer people, they really need people, even though they can be very subjective and even though a lot of times they need people only on their terms because the moon and cancer is very personalized. So a lot of times they can't see outside of themselves or they might just refuse to. So they really need people. They need a lot of support, but it's always on their turn, or a lot of times it's on their turn. Also, uh, Moon and Cancer needs a lot of coddling and, like I said, nurturing. nurturing. They need a soft place to fall. Uh, With Moon and Cancer, you might experience a lot of synchronicity, and you're also just going to be naturally psychic. So you're going to, like, experience a lot of psychic phenomenon and a lot of synchronicity. And you might experience a mirroring effect a lot of times in your life where people parallel each other, like people's life stories or people's personalities, or you might run into people with the same birth dates or the same names, or there might be certain aspects in people's charts that keep repeating. Also, of course, with Moon and Cancer, home will be extremely significant in this lifetime, especially If the moon is afflicted, that means that usually there's some type of issue within the home also, uh, or with your mother as well. Also, uh, the moon and cancer person is very introspective as well. Even if they tend to be outgoing, there's still a strong introspective side to them. And in that vein, they could be also very self-absorbed, self-contained. Moon and Cancer can be prone to irrational fears, and that's why I would advise any Moon and Cancer to be very careful when it comes to drinking and taking drugs, especially drugs that produce a hallucinogenic effect. So, like angel dust or uh, angel dust or wet sherm, whatever you call it, um, shrooms, uh, what else? DMT, heroin, all of that stuff that produces a hallucination, methamphetamine. Moon in Cancer is a very sensitive position for the moon. And intoxicating substances could really make your mind uh, disassociate with your moon in Cancer. So you've got to be careful. And I've known some moon in Cancer people where they, they might be able to take certain drugs, but like drugs like weed in particular. Because weed does tend to be a truth serum, and weed does tend to uh, expand your imagination. Um where moon and cancer people, they can't deal with uh, weed. Or I've even known of sun and cancer people where they have a hard time smoking weed because they, it makes them very paranoid. So they're one of the ones, uh, moon and cancer can produce paranoia in general, but especially under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Um, let me see. Prone to irrational fears, I said that, can be very insecure in unfamiliar environments and situations, needs familiarity. Now, that familiarity may not necessarily be family because they might have issues with their family, but it needs to be familiarity. So it could be lifelong friends, what have you. Also, uh, moon and cancer men may become very dependent upon women, and usually they want a mother, not a mate. So that's one of the uh, downsides of a man with moon and cancer. A lot of times he's looking for a mother instead of a mate, and he could be a mama's boy, but a moon and cancer woman could be a mama's girl. Also, a moon and cancer person can sometimes be prone to illogical decision-making. And then, of course, they're prone to shifting moods. 
And if the moon is afflicted, meaning if it's challenged by hard aspects, they can be prone to bipolar disorder because, again, the moon in cancer is very sensitive. So even though the moon rules cancer, the moon in cancer is still very vulnerable. So that's one of the rulerships where it's like, okay, the moon rules cancer, but with that moon in cancer, you're especially vulnerable. Now, also, uh, tend to be very subjective, lack objectivity. And if your moon is afflicted, and if it happens to fall in the 4th house, the 6th house, possibly the 7th, but definitely the 8th, 11th, or 12th, you could more, more than likely you're going to have serious challenges with your mother or family in general, or there might be challenges in terms of you becoming a mother if you're a woman or motherhood in general. So now I'm going to move on to Saturn and Cancer. Saturn and Cancer can be particularly hard because Cancer is a very personal sign and Saturn is very impersonal. Now, Saturn rules Capricorn, and Capricorn and Cancer are opposing signs. So Saturn and Cancer is not a happy place for Saturn. So the cards that I, uh, the card that I drew for Saturn and Cancer is Five of Swords. And if any of my listeners know about tarot, Five of Swords is one of the most negative cards in the tarot deck it's a card that can deal with strife it can deal with separation it can deal with animosity it can deal with backstabbing it can deal with a lack of trust a thievery i mean it's just so many negative manifestations of that card so it makes sense that five of swords is related to saturn and cancer now five of swords is actually an aquarius card it's venus and aquarius but Venus in Aquarius is not good for relationships, and it's not good for uh, 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 creating harmony. So with Saturn and Cancer, you're bound to encounter some issues with the home or your early foundations, like your early home life. But it could be home in general. Like, for instance, you could buy an old home, and there might be problems with the structure of the home or the foundation of the home, or you might have to replace the roof of the home. Also, uh, Saturn and Cancer can produce issues with the mother or becoming a mother or being a mother. Like, for instance, you might be a mother, but you might lack that mothering instinct or you might lack that natural nurturing instinct. Or you might feel like you didn't get enough nurturing from your own mother. Also, Saturn and Cancer can produce for a man or for a lesbian that's looking for a wife issues with finding a wife or having a wife. So the type of women that you would like to become your wife, they they might seem like they are unattainable or they might be opportunistic or they just might be very negative individuals. So basically a lot of karma can be tied up with the fact that you want a wife. Uh, Saturn and Cancer can also produce issues with the family or family in general. Saturn and Cancer, I've seen in uh, women's charts, it produces issues with the breast because cancer deals with the breast. Also, where a woman is having challenges with breastfeeding. Um, I knew of a woman that uh, she had Saturn and cancer, and she breastfed her first child, and she lost all of her breast tissue. Like, her breast became totally flat. So as a result, she got breast implants because she, like, basically, like, she, her breasts were, like, very, very flat. So in that case, she felt a need, and Saturn could de deal with what what is lacking or a deficiency. So in that case, she felt like it was necessary, and Saturn can also deal with, and can, especially in cancer, uh, necessities, she felt like it was necessary to uh, get the reconstructive surgery on her breast because that uh, the breastfeeding wrecked so much havoc upon her natural breast. Now, uh, also, Saturn and cancer can produce issues with race, and ethnicity. Oh, uh, I know of another female with Saturn and Cancer that has like sh not strong issues, but there are little issues with her race, um, being able to relate to members of her own race. Um, so a woman or a man with Saturn and Cancer, they may date outside of their race, or they may have an issue with uh, 
people in their own race and they may say, you know, I'm never going to, like, if they're Mexican, I'm never going to, or Hispanic, I'm never going to date a Hispanic person. If they're black, I'm not going to date a black person. I'm just dating white people or whatever like that. So that could be Saturn and Cancer as well. Um, Also, Saturn and Cancer can produce someone who's just racism. I mean, racist. And it basically can deal with racism in general. Um, Saturn, or being a victim of racism, uh, Saturn and Cancer can also deal with a lack of emotional intelligence or emotional control. So when things get really hectic, the person may really lash out emotionally or just have an emotional meltdown. And that's really depending on where Saturn ends up in your chart as well. Saturn and Cancer can also produce eating disorders. And it can deal with placing too much importance upon food in general, especially with respect to restrictions. So Saturn and Cancer can produce someone who is prone to bulimia or anorexia, or they just might be very anal when it comes to what they put in their mouth. Now, Jupiter and Cancer. Jupiter and Cancer, the card that I uh, drew for Jupiter and Cancer is King of Swords, which is very interesting in um, my opinion, because I expected to see, and this is what I mean about tarot and their humor, but it makes perfect sense once I really uh, thought about it. So with Jupiter and Cancer, I was expecting a card to come up that dealt more with, like, family, that was more warm, that was more something like ten of cups or something like that, maybe nine of cups. But I got the king of swords. So the first thing I thought about, I was like, okay, Jupiter, justice. King of swords is a card of justice. So with the King of Swords, I was also like, okay, it also deals with freedom and independence because uh, King of Swords, he doesn't like to be tied down. He doesn't like to be uh, crowded. Like he, he, he likes to be independent. He likes to be able to make his own decisions, and he's also well-informed. So some of the manifestations of Jupiter and Cancer can be uh, fighting for racial or cultural justice or fighting for the rights of minorities, Um, multiculturalism. Also, Jupiter and Cancer can produce a big family. Jupiter and Cancer can also produce a family that extends beyond blood relation, and that's King of Swords too, because King of Swords deals with all of the air signs. So just think about Aquarius. Aquarius oftentimes is so connected to their friends that their friends almost become like family to them. So just think about the King of Swords in that manifestation. Also, uh, Jupiter and Cancer can deal with having a home abroad, either a vacation home, like in the islands or something, or it could deal with expatriation, where you uh, actually move or relocate to another country. Jupiter and Cancer is also, uh, to me, about like doing hu- big humanitarian projects. So King of Swords, again, go back to Aquarius, uh, and Aquarius deals with humanitarianism. So feeding the hungry, for instance, uh, being part of a housing project where you're uh, building ha- houses to uh, for low-income families. Uh, just think about the story, if some of my listeners are familiar with Bible stories, just think about the story with Jesus and the two fishes and the five loaves of bread. That's Jupiter and Cancer all day, if you ask me, because Jupiter and Cancer, Cancer can deal with uh, nurturing, also uh, nutrients, uh, making sure that people are fed, making sure that people are taken care of, and Jupiter expands things. And Jupiter also deals with religion, and you could say that Jupiter is a significator for Jesus. So just think about the story of the two fishes and the five loaves of bread, which was always one of my favorite Bible stories growing up. And I would always be like, oh, wow, how did he do it? But I'm thinking he must have chopped that fish, those fish up into small little bit, bite-sized pieces and, like, just crumbled the bread up and made a big casserole dish of stuffing or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Jupiter Cancer can also deal with, uh, like, being a history professor or a historian Oh, uh, you could get a degree in history possibly if Jupiter is in Cancer in your chart, and it can also deal with ancestor worship, because Cancer deals with your lineage, your heritage, your family tree, your ancestors that have come before you, and Jupiter deals with spirituality and worship and religion and all that good stuff. 
So now, before I open up the phone lines, oh, my God. See, this is what I mean. I have so much to discuss. I didn't even get into the celebrities yet. But um, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to hurry up and get through this. Because now I want to get into uh, Cancer Through the Houses. And I pulled cards for each of these as well. And the first card, it was really uh, interesting. It's very telling. So uh, Cancer on the Ascendant, Cancer in the First House. The card that I pulled was the Tower card, which is very interesting because that card is not really akin to Cancer energy. But when you really think about it, if we're talking about Cancer in the first house, Cancer on the Ascendant, that can deal with an outpouring of emotion and also being very emotionally sensitive, being prone to emotional upset or going to emotional uh, vacillating between emotional extremes. The Tower card is a card of revelation. So as a Cancer rising, you are naturally geared up to receive psychic revelations and psychic impressions. So the Tower card, it's a card of destruction and a card of upheaval, but it's also a card of revelations where you receive a revelation of the truth or a revelation of things to come. And then I've noticed with... uh, it's quite common with cancer rising where there was an upheaval in the early home environment. So the tower card, again, can deal with an upheaval. And also some cancer rising people, they were separated from their family from an early age or there was some issue with their family unit or their early home life, starting from maybe when they were even an infant. So that could be tower on the ascendant in the first house. Also uh, can be very shy in youth, but opens up as an adult. So cancer rising tends to be very shy as a child, but they tend to uh, become more comfortable with strangers as they become an adult because they've gained more confidence and they're living more so through their sun sign, um, which points to, you know, having more confidence, being more sure of yourself. Also cancer rising can produce discord among family members. Striking facial features, so that points to the tower too, especially the eyes, the hair as well, but especially the eyes. Like cancer rising can produce these eyes that just pull you in and that some sometimes it can be even alarming the way their eyes are and the way they can look at you. So that's very tower because the tower card can deal with like alarm or things that strike. So strikingly striking facial features. Also, uh, cancer rising can produce a big, full head of hair, especially overflowing with curls. Cancer period, I've noticed. A lot of cancers just have that nice, full uh, head of hair with these nice curls. Also, cancer rising can produce sudden shifts or changes in mood and persona, and that uh, deals with the tower card. And then cancer can be very guarded, but once they let their guard down and they like you, they can be all over you. So the image in the tower card is basically lightning being struck, is striking the tower. There's these two people that are being thrown out of the tower. So just think about how cancer has a shell, but once you're able to break through that shell, they might be all over you. So all of this, all of their personality starts pouring out. So that could be a manifestation of tower, the tower card. And also, uh, cancer rising, they might have a tendency to spill the beans, like spill some secrets about other people. So uh, that could be very tower as well, revealing information, and also the hypersensitivity. So cancer rising, especially when they're under stress, they could easily break out into rashes, highs, or they could get into accidents. They could be accident prone when affected by negative energy or not too much on their mind or they're worried or fearful about something. They can make matters worse. So that's very tower, tower card and tarot to me. All right, real quick, cancer on the second house cup. I got the three of wands card. That's a card of receptivity. It's also a card of sending things out, getting things back. It's a card of exchange. So with that, uh, cancer on the second cup deals with accumulation. You want to accumulate as much money and resources as possible because you need to feel secure. You need to feel safe. Um, also, re- receptivity likes a lot of support, so also likes financial support. Likes to uh, pull your money into a pot at times, but you can also be a hoarder as well. 
So that three of wands card could go either way. It could go where you're like you're just constantly receiving things, but also where you're sending things out. And that's why uh, cancer on the second cusp can deal with having an at-home business or even just a small business in general where you're making goods or you're providing a personalized service to people. But a lot of times it will be on a small personalized level. So that's very three of wands. And also three of wands the no support system. So cancer on the second house cusp means that you need a very stable support system around you. Also, uh, there's a tendency to hoard money. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Now, cancer on the third house cusp, what's interesting is I got the three of wands card again. I was like, wow, that's what I mean about my tarot deck having this sense of humor with me. So it's like, okay, we're going to throw you the three of wands card again, work with it. And I was like, okay. So with that, I'm like, okay, three of wands, you're sending out information or you're sending out things. So I'm like, that's the storyteller. Cancer on the third house cusp is a storyteller. But cancer on the third house cusp might also be telling everyone's business, and they might be the busybody. They might always be trying to get the inside scoop on informate on um, the situation. Um, but also think about this. Uh, cancer on the third house cusp is the block party organizer. They're the neighborhood watch committee leader. When it comes to siblings, they might be more of a mother to their siblings than an actual sibling. Um, they like to teach their siblings, and they can be very protective over their siblings. Uh, with cancer on the third, you might be very close to your mother. Like you might speak to your mother on a daily basis as an adult. Also, cancer on the third can indicate being homeschooled or attending a boarding school. Cancer on the third is great for songwriting, poetry, and novels. It's also good for writing biographies. It uh, makes a good uh, lover of history. And it can make you bilingual. So think about the term mother's tongue or your mother tongue. So you could have cancer on your third house cut. And perhaps in your family, you spoke a language at home, maybe Spanish, but then when you went out into the world, you had to speak English. So it could produce uh, a person that's bilingual. Four, cancer on the fourth, three of swords. So I've noticed with people with cancer on the fourth, even though some people would ascribe cancer to the fourth house naturally, um, three of swords is not a happy family-oriented card. So, but I've noticed with cancer on the fourth, a lot of times the person's upbringing wasn't exactly happy and secure. So, three of swords can point to family strife or where you moved, moved around a lot. Like my mother, for instance, she has cancer on the fourth house cut, and her uh, father was in the Navy, and they moved around. She even lived in Scotland for a few years um, in her life. And she has all these dolls from all these different uh, countries and stuff like that. So, and because the moon changes, the moon doesn't stay uh, stable. The moon, you know, shifts. It goes through phases. So cancer on the fourth house could deal with you moving around a lot and your home life not really being entirely stable. Also, um, it could deal with having unfinished business concerning your family or your early uh, background. It could bring an abject fear of death, cancer on the fourth. Um, also, uh, being very guarded, being very uh, fearful, not trusting outsiders, especially uh, certain areas where you're afraid to go to, like, um, or also you're afraid of certain countries or people from certain countries. It can make you rather myopic. Cancer on the fifth, fifth house cusp, that could bring a strong love for children or a need to protect children. So you might be drawn to those type of uh, jobs where you're providing protection to children, or you're ensuring their safety or protection, or you're ensuring that they get fed or whatever like that. Um, also, or you might be want to be a pediatric nurse. Cancer on the fifth can make you very indulgent, and you may not know when to say when because you're being led by your emotions when it comes to enjoyment and pleasures out of life. It could bring a strong need for sex, a strong need for love and romance, and where you could be emotionally needy, especially in love affairs, or you can attract emotionally needy lovers. Uh, cancer on the fifth is good for real estate investments, and the one who organizes family functions, events, and family vacations, they might have cancer on the fifth house cut. Also, if uh, you've created a band or a musical group or an acting troupe or something like that, you could have cancer on the fifth house cut because the fifth house could deal with talents and performing and whatnot. And again, cancer deals with like creating a family. And also uh, if you're into gambling, but you have cancer on the fifth house, cause 
that could be dangerous. Or cancer in the fifth house, period. That could be dangerous because you're an emotional gambler. And you can also be very superstitious. Now, cancer on the sixth house, cuss, or in the sixth house in general, you could go through many changes in terms of your diet. You could have digestive issues, stomach ailments, problems with your breath. Um, you could go through, uh, you could have an unpredictable work schedule. So you could be, like, your schedule could be uh, subject to change at any moment, or you could just work, work weird hours. Uh, you could work the graveyard shift with uh, cancer on the sixth house cup. There might be many changes of residence as similar with uh, the fourth house uh, cusp or in the fourth house. And the sixth house deals with assimilation. So just think about how if you change residences, often you're constantly having to assimilate into a new environment. And then um, family might always be in need of your help with cancer on the sixth. Um, there might be issues with integration growing up, like you could have grew up in a racist town as a person of color and you didn't fit in. Also, you could be ritualistic when it comes to food and your diet. Cancer on the 6th can produce food allergies, and you could be an emotional eater, which could lead to weight gain and obesity. Cancer on the 7th cusp, that's pretty uh, challenging. I have cancer on the 7th house cusp, so I know all about it. So with cancer on the 7th house cusp, you might feel a need to separate from your family, especially as an adult, and this could deal with uh relocating far away from them as an adult. And you just may not have a strong connection to family in general or family ties may not be that strong or important to you maintaining. And mainly I'm talking about blood relatives here. And then also uh, with cancer on the seventh cusp because, or cancer in the seventh house, the seventh house deals with removals or where you're trying to remove to. So, with cancer on the seventh or in the seventh house, you might be attempting to get away from your past or your background or there's something in your early home life that you just don't even want to be associated with anymore. So you might move far away for that reason. And there could be issues with the home itself. So your home itself could be uh, coming under, could be under threat. So that could be in the form of eviction or foreclosure because the seventh house deals with legal concerns. Also, um, Cancer on the seventh can produce domestic violence if the moon is challenged by um, malefics like Mars or Pluto, or Mars and Pluto could just be in the uh, seventh house as well with cancer in that uh, seventh house. Also, it can produce a very needy partner. Um, it can re uh, produce the situation where you're constantly giving your partners a place to live or you're the one housing your partner, like the partner comes to live with you. And it can also produce duplicity in relationships where a relationship comes with ulterior motives and you can't see clearly because the moon, if you think about it, when things are light, uh, lit by the moon and the moon rules cancer and cancer is a dark sign, um, basically you can't see clearly. So cancer on the seven house cuts, you can be a victim of duplicity in relationships. And relationships can also be filled with severe emotional upset. So what I'm saying is very akin to the Five of Swords card, which is a card I pulled for the seventh house. And then also um, it can deal with a home invasion in some cases, and that's very Five of Swords because the seventh house also deals with your opponents and open enemies. Also, people who are not blood-related may feel more like family than your uh, actual blood relatives. Also, cancer on the seventh can produce house guests from hell. Bad roommates and enemies can be created in the process of living together. I'm a person. I've been a personal witness to this. Also, you could uh, end up having some type of state intervention coming into your home, like CPS or what have you. And also with cancer on the seventh, in terms of a more brighter side, you could be like a universal mother to others, to other people. And I'm kind of, I, I feel like sometimes I do kind of take on that role with cancer on my seventh house cusp where I can, uh, I kind of play it like a motherly role. And my moon is in my first house, so that really points to that too. Now, we only got a few more houses to go. Eighth house, when cancer is on the eighth house, number one, you're going to be very psychically sensitive. And you might be a lover of the occult. And you might be a natural witch. So you might be a practicing witch, but you might just be a witch naturally. Like you just got those witchy tendencies or witchy qualities. 
you might be tempted to practice black magic or you might even practice black magic. You would be a beast when it comes to spell work, let me tell you. And you might be drawn to certain spiritual traditions such as Voodoo, Palo Mayombe, Santeria, because they deal with a family of saints or spirit or lower or what have you. So just think about cancer and dealing with family. And when we're talking about the eighth house, that family can extend beyond humans. It could be spirit. It could be, um, you know, entities that exist on the astral realm. It could be people that have crossed over, that are like family members who have crossed over that you can still contact. So cancer on the eighth house, uh, on the eighth house cusp or in the eighth house in general, especially if it's intercepted in the eighth house, meaning it's totally in the eighth house. Don't be surprised if a close family member dies and they contact you once they've crossed over. Also, uh, it, a cancer on the uh, eighth can produce a dysfunctional family in general. Um, it can point to being a gang member at some part of your, some point in your life, or being a uh, you know a victim of a, you know a gang. Also, it can produce a family of criminals. So some people grow up in a family of drug dealers or a family of thieves. Uh, or a family of, you know, like just low-down type of people. It can also bring family curses, cancer on the eighth. Um, so it can be particularly nasty. And also when we're talking about your home, like your actual uh, physical property, your home, cancer on the eighth can bring plumbing problems. Oh, did I mention that the nine of cups was the card I got for cancer on the eighth? Maybe I didn't. I'm losing track of um, what I'm I'm just flowing here, but cancer on the eighth can produce plumbing problems, problems with your sewage. Uh, your home could get flooded out if you live in an area where there is prone to flooding, or it could be something where your hot water heater busts and, you know, water just uh, fills your basement. Or, you know, you could have a rainstorm and water just fills your basement. You could have a home like that. Also, your home is very prone to become burglarized with cancer on the eighth. Cancer on the eighth can also produce a sex addiction in some people. Now, that's going to really depend on the moon sign and the placement, like what house it falls in. And in some cases, depending on the moon sign and placement, it can indicate incest. And there could be issues with the breast, issues with the stomach, eating disorders, especially bulimia, because the eighth house deals with bodily waste, including vomit. Also, with cancer on the eighth, a lien can be placed on your land or property. And then um, getting heavily into debt as a result of a mortgage or home repairs, uh, that's a manifestation of cancer on the eighth. Now, the ninth. Cancer on the ninth, I got the Hierophant card, which is a card, a major arcana card of the tarot deck. It's a card that deals with spirituality, so it makes sense with the ninth house. The ninth house is a spiritual house, a religious house, and the Hierophant deals with uh, religious and spiritual orders or organizations, higher learning. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. The Hierophant is a card of higher learning, colleges and universities, religion, uh, spiritual orders. Hierophant is the Pope. He's the priest. So it makes sense that cancer on the ninth would be the hierophant. So you can look at it as ancestor worship, following your family's religious traditions, omens. Again, you could take it back to uh, being drawn to religions like Voodoo, Palo Mayombe, Santeria. Um, uh, what's that other one? Oh, I forgot that other uh, religion that deals with uh, spirits. But um, also you could be into goddess worship. You could be into Gaia worship, Wicca. Uh, you could be into angel worship with cancer on the ninth house. Uh, you might be very psychically into, most likely you are. You might be able to engage in prophecy. Uh, you might get a degree in history or antiquity. You might be a natural historian. You might just have a strong love for history, especially when it comes to certain foreign nations. You might become an expatriate where you... Um, actually relocate to another country, and or you might just live abroad for an extended period of time. Maybe you'll have a work assignment in another country. It can also produce problems with immigration or naturalization. Cancer on the tip house is Ace of Swords. I thought that was funny. This is what I mean about tarot and its sense of humor, because when I saw that Ace of Swords, I was like, that's a chef's knife. 
Now, so if you know what the Ace of Swords look like, it's just a sword that's being stuck into the ground. So I immediately looked at it as, oh, that's a knife. So cancer on the 10th house cusp for the men having can produce a chef or a real estate agent. It's good for nursing. It's also good for early childhood education. It's good for being a trainer. Um, in terms of your mother, because the 10th house can deal with your mother, um, it could deal with your mother was always working and you needed, or she was always outside the home and you needed her more to be in the home, but she really wasn't there for you. Um, also, you might be a workaholic with cancer on the 10th where work may feel more like home than home. Also, with cancer on the 10th, you might have been a ward of the state at some point in your life. That's not necessarily the case. You really got to look at how the moon ends up in your chart. Also, it could deal with perhaps you want to run a homeless shelter or a nursing home or you um, open a housekeeping business or you're in the hospitality industry or you have a career in hotel management. Those are some of the manifestations of cancer. So cancer on the temp, just think about your nurturing from an administrative position or from a business uh, position. 11th house, four swords, friends are more like family can be very active on social media, but will also be quick to leave a group or unfriend someone if they feel threatened or if they uh, feel like, you know, the person is against them. Uh, can be very intuitive, very psychic, would make a very good tarot reader, palm reader. Uh, they're very good at uh, having these strong hunches. They might be into nouveau cuisine or they might be an adventurous eater, might be a vegan. Uh, they have problems with their nervous system, anxiety. Also, cancer on the 11th can produce the uh, phenomenon where wherever you lay your hat is your home. You could be end up living with friends or wherever you feel is convenient. Security and comfort may often seem like it's out of reach, and the goal of having a family, a wife, and a peaceful home may often seem out of reach as well. Cancer on the 11th can point to ancestral relations. If other factors apply, it could point to a dysfunctional family or a family where there's a lack of closeness true closeness, and there's a lack of unconditional love. And also it can point to uh, a very tumultuous early family home life where it was subject to upheaval and unpredictability. And lastly, Cancer on the 12th, Nine of Swords. Um, Nine of Swords is one of the more troublesome cards of the tarot deck, so I wasn't surprised when it came up for Cancer on the 12th because Cancer on the 12th can be rather troublesome. Basically, your home may feel like a prison. Um, a home could actually take you under, like you could um, buy a home and that basically be uh, where you shoot yourself in the foot because you can't keep up with the cost of the home. Uh, you could have a family full of shady types uh, or a family of crooks, a den of thieves. You're prone to paranoia, irrational fear, excessive worry frequent emotional upsets and disturbances, problems with the mother, problems with women, inability to become a mother, or a strong yearning to become a mother that is not fulfilled. It can deal with family karma, ancestor worship. It can bring madness and lunacy. So uh, just think about cancer dealing with home, and the 12th house can deal with institutions, institutions meaning prison, but it can also deal with institutions like a psychiatric hospital. So got to be careful with cancer on that 12th house cusp because your emotional state is really not under control. And you're very prone to hearing voices and uh, experiencing hallucinations like auditory and visual hallucinations. So depending on other factors, if the moon is in bad shape, I mean in really bad shape, it's like it's conjoined to six stars and asteroids and it's challenged by Pluto and all that stuff. The person could be schizophrenic. Now, I'm going to have to stop right here and open up the phone lines because I didn't realize um, it, this was going to take so long. So I'll get into some celebrities in between the phone calls, but I do want to open up the lines because people have been waiting for such a long time. So I'm going to start off with, 757, seven, because they have their hand up, 541, I'm opening your uh, line now. They changed the boards on this blog talk radio. Now it looks different. I'm not used to this. Greetings. Welcome to the Ace of Cups radio show. Who am I speaking with? Hey, Ru hey Ruzina, this is Kendra. <laughs> hey, Kendra. I had a feeling. I'm starting to recognize your number. How are you? <laughs> 
I'm doing fine. I'm just over here loving your show because I'm a cancer and everything <laughs> that you said is so true to the point where I was like cracking up with my friend. She's she, my best friend's a moon in cancer and we were just talking about how cancery we are. Um and cancer-y. she she's a little <laughs> cancery, I guess is the word, right? So, um I just, I'm just really glad that you're doing the show, and I'm just like over here just smiling so hard. I'm like, wow, this is so true. Even the dark sided, even I, the dark sided traits, I can resonate with some of them as well. Um, I'm a Cancer Sun in the ninth house, um, and okay. my family, uh, very religious, very into the church and everything. And I am, you know, I'm into that too. You know, I do a lot of like women ministries and stuff, helping with the kids. Um, I've done conferences helping women and things like that, and I actually love it. And um, it it can be a uh, very fluctuating at times because the you know cancer is the moon. But um, I deal with a lot of women a lot, um, and uh, sometimes I do need a break from. I guess I wouldn't say a break. I guess I would just say it can be challenging sometimes because women can be, you know how we can be sometimes. But um, I yeah. love it. But uh. <laughs> you know what I mean, but um, I uh, I guess I'm just the funny parts about what you said about the food. Like literally, like my life revolves around food. If I don't have food, I can't function. I can't think. I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, I have like a sweet tooth, like a sweet tooth all the time. I always want candies, cookies, sweets, things like that. And because of that, like I have a bad sour stomach. Like I have a really bad sour stomach. And even when I know that I'm not supposed to eat a lot of sweet, I still do it anyway because it's just good. Um, one day, mm-hmm. um, my cancer friend and I, it was fine with week, and um, we got so stressed out. She's a moon of cancer. We went to a pet store and just was in the pet store petting dogs for hours because we just – we were just so stressed out. and We just wanted to, like, see some dogs. So that's what we did together. It was mm-hmm. like a team. <laughs> it was a team effort. But I guess my question was, um, I have sun. What do I have? Sun opposite Neptune. And I have sun at 23 degrees in the ninth house. I just wanted to know, what do you think about that placement in itself? Now, of course, because, you know, you're a regular uh, listener and you call in a lot. So when you when I heard your voice, I pulled your I pulled your chart up. So I'm like, and that's the hey. first thing I zeroed in on was that sun opposition Neptune because that can be a bitch. But mm-hmm. it can be a blessing in disguise because, number one, I feel that it's really there for your protection because mm-hmm. that okay. aspect can alert you to situations that can help you to avoid danger and harm and victimization. So as a cancer, like I talked about, and you got mercury in cancer, which is good too, because that means that you can rely on your hunches and with your son in your ninth house, you have that very strong intuitive ability, very strong psychic ability. So with Mm -hmm. Neptune in the third house, we're talking about your immediate environment. So if something's going down in your immediate environment before it actually goes down, you might be able to pick up on it and be able to avoid that. Like something might just be like, you just might have it in you to be like, let, all right, it's time to go. Let's just go now. And next thing you yeah. know, you might hear about something happening, like some shootout or something like that, True, right at the spot so where you time. had just left. Really? Yes. Yes. It was well, you are a Scorpio life. rising, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I remember when I was a teenager, I was at this party, and um, like I was like maybe about 15, 16 years old at this party, and a shootout uh, happened, and like I, my friends and I made it out safely, but I was like, y'all, we just don't need, maybe we need to go home, like maybe can we go out to eat or something? I just don't feel right being here, and like if we were there, like a lot of people got shot that night, about maybe like eight or nine people got shot, and it was in a part where we were, like, partying, like, where we were kind of, like, stationed at. So, like, I just, I can just imagine, like, what would have happened there. You know, we, we probably would have got shot or got injured or, or killed. I, I think one person died, but, like, mm-hmm. the rest of us was injured. Um, But I was just like, y'all, we just, can we just go? Like, I just, like, I, mean, I don't want to be here no more. Mm-mm. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's happened wow. before. Yeah. Yeah, so always trust your gut, and if you just, and like, you might not even be able to put your finger on it, but it just might be, you just might not, you might just start feeling queasy, 
and you just might be like, I got to go home. Like, and that yes. is just your internal defense mechanism saving you from harm. Now, that opposition, I'm also looking at it in terms of the type of men you attract. So you got to be careful with the type of men that you attract because you attract the type Girl. of men that seem real good on the surface or they might seem all polished and shiny, but then when you peel back a few layers, it's a hot uh-huh. mess. Hell yeah. And they that. might be straight up liars. <laughs> oh my I mean, God. like, they might be totally different than how they project themselves to be when you first meet them. And they might, like, be talking all this good game and filling your head up with all these grand ideas. And then next thing you know, you know, the true, their true selves come out. And you're like, who the hell is this bomb I'm dealing with? What? Oh my God! I'm over here like my face is turned red. <laughs> I deal with that a lot. I've been like, you really ain't shit. Like you're 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 not what you've cracked out to be. And I already got trust issues as well. And I'm dealing with that. And that's something I have to work on. But with that opposition, I'll be like, I just attract liars. And I'll be like, they really think that I'm like dumb or something. I'm like, I'm on to you. Like I see you. Like I know what you about. But mm-hmm. sometimes I can be a little disillusioned at first. I'm, I'm thinking, oh, mm-hmm. you know, they're cool, it's nice, you know, this is going to work out. And then as I get to know them or as the relationship continues, I'm just like, wow, I, I, I was bamboozled. Like, I really believed a lie, and I thought that it was okay. And it sucks, but that I do attract a lot of liars. I do. Mm-hmm. And I, I have, uh, my son is an aspect to Neptune, too, so I have the same type of thing. You have it a little bit. No, I can't even say you have it worse than me because a conjunction to Neptune and an opposition can actually manifest both, like, pretty bad in terms of the type of men mm-hmm. you attract. But basically just know that with your son and aspect to Neptune, challenging aspect to Neptune, um, you really can't trust your own judgment a lot of times when it comes to men. So it really helps, especially with Neptune in your third house, to bounce ideas off of, you know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be family or friends that you feel like would steer you the wrong way, but you need at least one person in your life that's going to give you that reality check and be yeah. like, look, you may not be able to see what I can see, but this dude is a bum or he's an asshole or he's a loser or something. You need somebody in your life. And it could be a professional advisor. You never know because mm-hmm. next dude is in Capricorn. So yeah. in the third house goes with communication. Yeah, and that's why, like, like I love, the, like, you and the Cosmic Council because when I call in on the show, y'all really do be giving me game, for real. Like, and I do appreciate that because <laughs> it helps me, like, kind of, like, think about some things. Sometimes my judgment, yeah, I get re- very clouded easily. And so I need that. So y'all are, like, y'all, y'all my ride and die. I'd be like, yes, like, please read it. Like, give me life. Thank you. Let Thank you for letting me know because sometimes I just get, blindsided a lot so yeah (laughs) well good well thank you so much for calling and I got to take some um other callers because I got a few uh people waiting I don't have much time left because I wanted to run my mouth but uh hopefully you'll (laughs) stay on the line and listen to the rest of the show thank you so much for being a loyal listener and always contributing you always got great things to contribute oh thanks girl I'll be on the line all right take care so this uh, new blog talk radio uh, dashboard, it says seven. I guess seven means that that's the mute or whatever. But, okay, so I'm going to open up 267597. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to have time to get into the celebrity charts. But, um, hey, greetings. Welcome to the Ace of Cups radio Hello. show. Oh, thank you, Sister Rocky. Hello. For, um, answer my call. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? I'm oh, doing no, pretty good. Thank you for accepting my call. I just had a quick question. Uh, I'm a cancer uh-huh. rising, and my south no, and my south no is in cancer. And I was curious, okay. what is the um, the correspondence with that? Cancer rising and south okay. no is in is in um cancer. Now, do you know if your south node is in your twelfth house or your first house? Actually, you could give me your birth information. I'll pull your chart. Oh real my quick. goodness. My south node should be in my okay, it's twelve twenty four seventy two. Oh my goodness. Yeah, twelve twenty four seventy two. Yeah. I was born at six eighteen PM. 
Twenty-four. Yes, sure Seventy-two. What's your name? Well, it's Oya, but it's got um, my original name is. Oh, Oya. Yeah. Let me see. Just give it to me again, because I I'm short for time, and it's I don't. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. When I have to. Right. It's twelve twenty. Right. It's twelve. Twelve twenty-four. Seventy-two. Okay. Twelve twenty-four. I'm six eighteen. And then six eighteen a.m. or p.m. Oh, p.m. 6.18 p.m. And where were you born? Right here in Coastal, PA. Still PA. All right. So let's see. Oh, don't do this thing. Okay. There it is. All right. So your south node is in your 12th house. So... That could be uh, rather troublesome because with the South Node in Cancer, you may come into this lifetime with some issues with family. It could be family as a whole, but it could be certain family members. It could be issues with your mother. But basically, you need to try to be less emotionally needy or emotionally dependent in this lifetime. You need to try to be more self-sufficient. However, with that South Node in your 12th house, it's very subconscious. That self note is very uh, it's subconscious energy you're dealing with. So things may manifest in your life that pertain to that self note in cancer that you really don't have any conscious control over. And these would more than likely be karmic circumstances involving, and it, can, it may not just be a family. It could also be your home life as well. So your home life could be rather, or your home, your actual physical home could be vulnerable at times. And it could deal with basically like you could buy a home and it could ha- have like a weak foundation or a weak structure. Or like I mentioned earlier, yeah. where a home could really do you in, like you could purchase a home and it has all the, like there's all this need for repair. The next thing you know, you're going into debt because you're trying to keep up with that house. Or it could deal with you opening your home to the wrong type of people. I don't know if you've ever had that situation before yes, where, in the past. you know, some, okay, somebody is in need of your help and they need a place to lay their head. You open up your home and you get burnt in the process or they steal from you or something. So you got yes, number one, past, you got to be very past. careful. Okay, good. I'm glad you confirmed yes, that. You got to be very careful oh, of who you allow in your home and personal space. Yes. Okay, I thank you for and this. Also, being a, this oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Also, you can't be too tied to one place in this lifetime. You have to be you're uh, right. willing to move around. And I have. You're you're right about good. that. Yes. Good. Well, I thank you. I don't want to take much of your time, and I'm always listening to your show. Okay. Well, you're welcome, yes. and thank you so much thank for you. listening and for all your support. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good night. All right. Many blessings. Good night. So I'm pressing seven. I'm thinking that's what mute means. All right. So the next a person that's been holding starts with 618-606. I'm opening your line. Greetings. Welcome to the Ace of Cups radio show. Hi, Miss Verbena. This is Anna. Hi, Anna. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm enjoying your show tonight. Thank you. Now, is this the Anna, my client Anna, or a different yep. Anna? Mm-hmm. Your client. This is my client Anna. How uh-huh. are you, girl? I was okay. thinking about you the other day. I swear, I was thinking about you a couple of days ago. I was like, I haven't heard from her in a minute. I wonder how she's doing. And here you go calling. So thank you so much for calling in. Now, mm-hmm. um, before you get into a question, I want to talk about where cancer is in your chart. So let me pull up your chart because, of course, I have your chart in my file. I don't think I have any cancer in my in my chart, which is surprising. Mm-hmm. All right. Nope, you don't. But cancer is in your ninth house. And did you ever give me your uh, exact birth time? My birth certificate says 4.04 p.m., so that's the time that I go by. Okay. I have that. Okay. So cancer is intercepted in your ninth house. That's interesting. Let me ask you this. Have you ever, like, fantasized about 
living in another country somewhere or somewhere exotic or at least having a vacation home? Yes. Yes. It might actually behoove you to spend some time out of the country just exploring another side of life. And your moon is in Pisces, which ties into that. Because Pisces can deal with getting away to far off land. And with you being a Gemini, you're built for that anyway. Uh, Because, you know, Gemini always needs a change of pace. Yes. Still young, so, you know, this might not happen. You might not get the hankering to, like, explore other countries and other ways of living until you get older. So it might not hit you, like, exactly now, but... If if it's not like living for a few years in another country, I'm definitely seeing where you would do well vacationing abroad. Have you ever vacationed out of the uh, states before? No, but I was um, recently thinking about going on a study abroad trip because I'm in college. So I was uh, thinking about taking a semester to um, just go abroad and study. Um, but I'm trying to get my finances worked out. But I think that that would be good for me. I think so, too, because, like I said, cancer's in your ninth house. It's intercepted, which means it's fully in your ninth house. The ninth house does deal with colleges and universities and higher education. So that's exactly, like, that's a perfect manifestation of what you just described, studying abroad. Perfect. Right. Yeah. Now, I have a question when it comes to cancers. Like, I know that you were talking Mm -hmm. about how, like, they um, are really, like, emotional and sensitive do they have something with, like, uh, boundaries? Like, do they tend to cross boundaries when they come, especially the females? Like, having a cancer female friend, do they um, really respect, like, people's boundaries? Like, because sometimes I feel as if they, um, like, when they're, uh, when them and their spouse are into it or them and their significant other is into it, they may seem to want to, like, if you're their friend and you're their close friend, they may want to cross that line and try to come on the other side. Is that with, like, just bring – because it seems as if that's happening to me, but I don't know if that's just with me or is that with just cancers in general. Well, I'll say this. Cancer is a water sign, and all water signs, all three of the water signs can have issues with boundaries because just think about how water operates. So when a cancer gets really close and comfortable with you, they can overstep their boundaries at times. Okay, but okay. they're not as bad as say a Pisces with that. Okay, and they're not okay. controlling with it like a Scorpio would be, or or manipulative okay. like a Scorpio. So a Cancer will overstep their boundaries usually because either they care too much, or they just have a need to be real close, or they have a need to mirror you. Like okay. I don't know if you ever seen that movie Single White Female. Yes. If you ask me, that's like a dark-sided cancer uh, chick because cancer can do this mirroring thing where they try to mirror you if they really admire you or really like you or whatever. And um, Uh it can almost be on the point of, like, psycho stuff. So that is one of the dark manifestations of cancer. Okay. Well, I'm not going to hold you long. Thank you for answering my questions. And I'll be talking to you soon. Okay, good. Take care. Okay. All all right. So, click in seven. Now, let me see down the line. I have the next person that's been holding. Uh, actually, I got somebody that's been holding for thirty four minutes. Let me take seven one eight six hundred. Greetings. Yeah. Welcome to the Ace of Cups Radio Show. Yeah, hello, Robina. This is Alex. Um, I called a couple of months ago on your show. I think Hi. it was about the. It was. I don't even remember me, but I called like a couple of months ago. I remember you. Oh, uh, you said your name was Alex. Yeah, yeah, from Brooklyn. I definitely remember your voice. Oh, okay. how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. No, I just um just wanted to put an input. That's all because um I have cancer okay. in the north node in the 8th house in the 11th degree. So, um, you know, um, one of the things I learned about that North Node is, you know, in this lifetime, you really have to go, you know, by your feelings, 
and you know you by your intuition and one of the the you know one of the more painful lessons of this north note I've noticed is that everything is not about um you know being successful everything is not about being you know you know career oriented and things like that mm-hmm. because I know with Capricorn in the south node you know you kind of bring those old habits you know to this lifetime mm-hmm. so you know yeah that's one of the things that you know I've, I've um, learned about that Cancer North Node, and I do have a Cancer yes. Moon in the ninth house, and I do have Cancer in mm. the ninth house, the Scorpio rising. But um, okay. you know that's one of the things you know because you know having that Capricorn in the South Node, sometimes you know you're very hard on yourself. You know if you're not in a certain career or if you don't have a certain yep. status. Um, mm-hmm. And you know things like that. So I don't know. It's, I think it's one of the most. Um, I mean, it's a good, I don't know, it's one of the, you know, more challenging north nodes out there. I guess maybe Scorpio north node or, you know, Pisces, but, you know, since it's a water yeah, sign. It, yeah, it can be rather challenging, especially pertaining to career, like you said, because what I noticed with a lot of south node Capricorn, north node cancer people, uh, especially if they work for major large corporations, that can really put a damper on their spirit, especially if they're not, in a leadership position or in an executive position, because uh, like you say, you're still carrying a lot of that Capricorn energy over into this lifetime. So you're used to being a high level executive or a high level business person or what have you. So to just be one of the, one of the people among the ranks or just being a lowly employee in a huge corporation can be rather soul crushing for a South node Capricorn, North node cancer person. So I always advise North Node Cancer people to try to work for small uh, family-owned operations or small businesses where you can really play a significant role and really make a difference and you can really uh, form close bonds with your coworkers and whatnot and feel like a little family. So hopefully, you know, that's some advice that uh, you can use as well. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I just wanted to give that input. That's all. You know, every time I call here, I get a little nervous because I'm not used to, <laughs> you know. Shoot, every you know, time I do this show, I get show. nervous. Oh, I do. No, every time I do this show, <laughs> I, I don't get know nervous. How so, are listening to yeah. us, you know. So <laughs> I always get nervous. Like, you know, I would like to say more things, but you know, I get kind of scared. You know what I mean? So, you know, but yeah. um, yeah, I just wanted, I just wanted to give that input. I don't want to hold, you know, you know, I don't want to hold the line or whatever. So, you know. Okay. Well, thank you so much so, for calling in. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for being a, a keep up the good work. I always listen to your show. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Many blessings. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. All right. So now we're. I'm going to take nine seven three. It looks like I have time for maybe two more callers. Uh, nine seven three, and then I want to take three four seven. So nine seven three, I'm opening your line. Greetings, welcome to the Ace of Cups Radio Show. Oh, greetings! Hi, I didn't have my hand up, but I was just calling in um, to listen toward the very end, um, and I missed the whole show. I'm so disappointed, but um, just keep doing your thing. I'm actually a Leo, so I, and my Mercury is in Cancer, so I wanted to get some of the information that you were give, giving out. And um, so, yeah, I really didn't have a question. I was just listening in. Okay. Well, the replay will be available about, like, 20 minutes after this show ends, so you can always go back and listen to it. But thank you so much for okay. uh, listening. Great. No uh, problem, sis. All right. Thank many you. to you. All right. All right, bye-bye. peace. All right. So I might have time for one more caller. This uh, caller's number is 347928. Okay. Hey, welcome to the Ace of Cups radio show. Good evening. How are you? I'm doing fine. How Hello? are you? Hello? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. <laughs> so um, first of all, I'm a big fan. I appreciate everything you do. And um, I just want to say, like, I'm a cancer and I am infatuated with a Scorpio. Okay. I mean, you, you can see how that could happen. Um, I mm-hmm. dated the Scorpio since college. We've been off and on, but now we're like really, really on. But the downside is I'm married. 
And so I'm okay. stepping out of my relationships. And I want to so know, this like, Scorpio must be something. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she's on point. Um, she's a Scorpio sun, Gemini rising, uh-huh. Capricorn moon, and I am a Cancer sun, Aquarius moon, Libra rising. And in numerology, she's an eight, but I'm a seven. Mm-hmm. So if you have any advice, okay, on what I should do, and I'm married to a Capricorn. Okay, so. so just off of numerology, the eight and the seven, that's rather incompatible. Eight is very practical. Eight is very, uh, very no-nonsense, business-like. Eight also needs a lot of time um, just to themselves to be self-sufficient alone. But so does seven. Seven, you know, you need your downtime as well. You have a tendency to uh, want to yeah. escape uh, from reality at times. But the good thing is um, – that Scorpio can bring you back to reality. So mm-hmm. Scorpio is good for Scorpio is good for keeping cancer, um, basically keeping cancer on their toes, keeping cancer in line, and also providing some structure and being very supportive for cancer. So it's no surprise why you know you gravitated towards her. But um, what's her birth date again? Her actual birth date is October twenty third, nineteen eighty two. Ten twenty three eighty two. And then what's your birthday? Seven seven eighty two. It's off the wall. Sex. Like the sex is out of control. I'm not surprised. All that emotion. Wow. Yeah. So what is your main question? What is your main question? Because I only got about ten seconds left and I want to make sure I answer your question. I just want to know long term, like where I should be, because I'm married. Okay. Stay with the cap, or you know, try to do other things. It looks like you need to basically just go for the, go with the flow for now. Continue mm-hmm. doing what you're doing with Scorpio, but don't make any major moves because this looks like it's not going to last forever. So it's nothing to leave your marriage over. I can tell you that much for sure. Okay. Even though you're feeling these great feelings, you're having a great sex and all that stuff, I would not throw away your marriage for Miss Scorpio. Great. Okay. That wouldn't be a good enough reason. So hopefully I helped you and I answered your question. And then um, tune in on July 15th because I'm going to be broadcasting another Ace of Cups radio show. Thank you so much for uh, listening, everyone, and for uh, all of you who called in. Many blessings to you all, and 